Mm, yes, indeed. Welcome to another outstanding edition of the official McCoy podcast. You already know what time it is. We're brought to you by No Coast and the good official, good official people. Damn, I spliced that in. The good people here at Officialized Media. Some good people, as far as I can tell. There could be some shady ones. You never know. It's 2018. People be having like 13 faces. I only got one. This gray one, this slightly salt and pepperish one you see before in front of you. And let's get straight to it. The NFL. There's only a couple of real things that matter in the NFL news right now. Dez is back. Dez back cracking with a real life quarterback, not a broken down Tony Romo and not that new quarterback that got over there at Dallas running that option. He running the option in the NFL and I'm sick of it. You know what I mean? Dez is back, got a real life quarterback and Drew Brees is over there throwing that thing around real nice, right? And they got a one year deal and they got a real quarterback. This ain't no risk for the New Orleans Saints. Dez is not going to come in there and affect in anybody's locker room. Maybe the Dallas locker room needed some infecting. Maybe it wasn't Dez's fault. We said we were on Dez's side. We was wondering why they were throwing Dez under the bus, trying to keep your boy over there at quarterback and uh, keep, what's his do the running back, Ezekiel Elliott, happy. I'm happy Dez got out of that Dallas situation and slid on over there to the Saints. The Saints are a contender with Dez. I bet you Dez gets a touchdown in his first game. What you call it, did? What's his name? Came from the Raiders. Uh, Mari Cooper. It was a light touchdown too. It's them Dak Prescott touchdowns. You know, seventeen yards, fifteen yards. You know, I think it was twenty-three. He did all the work. He juked the hell out of the boy from the uh, that came up from the Patriots and got the bread that won the Super Bowl. What's his name? Butler. They was Debbie dogging Butler. He got to. He got to. He be too aggressive. You need to anticipate a little better. This ain't the goal line in the Super Bowl, homie. You just can't jump everybody's routes. That guy is him. Dudes play basketball. They're crossing you over and getting over there to the cone. And that's exactly what he did. Made Dak Prescott look good. Made Jerry Jones double down on Dak Prescott. Whatever, Jerry. It's Jerry's world. You know, he builds the big thing in Texas. He's got the, the office that looks like he collects relics with the Indiana Jones. Uh, shipped him. He's got like every meaningful thing in sports that he's hoarding over there in his office. Jerry Jones, this, I mean, it's got to stop, man. They got Al, Al Davis was even more chill than Jerry. Right? Because at least Al passed, <laughs> Al didn't pass away on purpose, but he got up out of there and he left it to his son who's doing a, may or may not be doing a good job now that he handed over to Groovy. Anyway, they're delusional over there in Dallas. What's going on in there? It's too much beef. They got containing beef over there in Dallas. It's, it's clouding their judgment. Jerry Jones is over there tripping. I'm glad... I'm glad Dez got up out of there is going to get a chance to play in the NFL. Only other thing that matters in the NFL. Now, there's two other things that matters. One thing matters for me. One thing matters for you. One thing that was matters for, for the viewers and other people who follow the NFL was the Brady and Rodgers matchup. That thing was underwhelming, man. Who is better, Brady or Rodgers? I mean, in the regular season, if you like yards and fantasy points, you're rolling with Rodgers. You know what I mean? But he keeps he seemed to keep a nasty locker room. Everybody seems a little bit happier over there with during the Patriot way. Not that it's any much more better, but you're going to go to the Super Bowl. Aaron got to go to the Super Bowl before y'all start handing out all these goat tags. Yeah, he can make all the throws. He makes everybody, he makes his so-so receivers look good. But Brady got so-so receivers and one Gronk. Now you got a flash. You got a flash and a Gronk. If Rodgers has some people over there with some better nicknames. Maybe he, they would be doing better, but he doesn't. So I'm rolling with Brady. Other part in person I'm rolling out is Nick Mullins. Hey, you got to be supporting the Nick Mullins fan of manifestation, man. Nick Mullins came in there chunking that thing around like Brett Favre. He went to Southern Mississippi. Must be something down there in the water. He's been named a starter for the next game. Can he run the table and take us to the wild card game? We're Niners fans here. I'd officialize. Well, I am. I don't know what everybody else is. Don't even really matter. Ain't really trying to hear it. Wait till you get your own podcast and you can start supporting your own teams. But for now, we dog the Cowboys and we pump the 49ers. Ain't no secret. We don't talk about no Raiders till they get Chucky out of there. Chucky got to get something right. They got to get somebody out of there. Anyway, 
That's all I really want to talk about football. Nick Mullins is cracking. Good for Nick. It's the Nick Mullins manifestation is what we're naming it. We're saying he's going to run the table and get us to the wild card. The delusional Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys and your fan base and whatever's going on in Dallas just needs to stop. Dez is back. And that's all we really need to talk about in the NFL. It's halfway point. Halfway point now. Yeah, it's been a decent first half of the season. Not too much kneeling. <laughs> And other, and other controversial issues. They've been keeping it on the field. Transitioning over to the UFC, the Black Beast fought Cormier. May or may not have been a, a, a outclassed. May or may not have been outclassed. It's too early. Didn't the Black Beast just fight 10 days ago? Damn, they in the octagon. That's a hard sport for you to just be bouncing about in two weeks. I know what happened. I know what happened to the Black Beast. He wasn't outclassed. His balls weren't hot enough. However, whatever the heat thing that happened in his bot, his balls in that fight that he heard pre had previously had him out there fighting on the edge. So that they tricked him. If they put something in the thing to make his ball sack ha heat up when he put on his gear, they, 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 they missed out on the opportunity against Cormier. You should never fight Cormier when your balls ain't hot. If, ball, if, your ball, if hot balls had you winning. Stick with what got you there. Go hot balls. Stay hot balls on them. Speaking of hot balls, your boy Floyd said he's fighting a little kid on, on, on New Year's Eve. Kid looks like a little kid. I know he's dangerous. He got some UFC sh shit that I ain't got. You know what I mean? You got to watch out nowadays. You try to punk people based on their weight, and they got some grapple or holding skills, and they know some, where to hit you in the nerve endings. And, and it ends up bad for you. Might end up bad for Floyd. Is he going to box? He got the photo on IG with the MMA gloves. Well, what's that mean at the end of the day? I ain't seen him training with no MMA fighters. And he's always said, if you got to come to his world and box him, stop boxing little kids from Japan. Thought you was fighting Manny over you was at the Japanese concert. We talked about it on the podcast. Did we not, fellas? He was at the, it got, when it got weird on Floyd and Manny, there was at the concert and now it turns out it had nothing to do with Manny. Manny just introduced him to the little boy at the concert that he was about to fight in Japan. Man, that's a good opportunity for that kid. It's a real good opportunity for that kid, man. You got to watch out, man, going over there Jap Japan. He gets to fight in the motherland, too. Get to sleep, may or not get to sleep in his own bed before the fight. Watch out, Floyd. Stop fighting little kids. Go fight an adult. Go fight Errol Smith. And there's some boxers out there. Is it about money? Can't be about bread at this point, right? When you got $6 million in watches and, and another $6 million in cars, it can't be about the money play. We're tired of the old money play. We'll take another good fight, but I don't know about fighting no little kids. Leave them little kids alone, dog. Boy just trying to start his career out there in Japan. Here come Floyd acting like he going to get us some MMA. Stop. NBA news. NBA season is, damn. Sure do wish the Lakers were doing just a little bit better so we don't have to hear all this nonsense about Luke. Y'all trying to fire Luke? Already? It ain't Luke's fault. You know, Magic coming in, Magic back running the Lakers, so of course, you know, you heard the reports, Magic's is disgruntled, headed off Luke. May or may not have said some stuff to him about defense or a staff or whatever it is that's going on over there. That's what be expected. If Magic Johnson coming in there and you the Laker coach, you got to be thinking Magic going to be in the office every two days. Stop trying to fire Luke. I'm trying to hear that. San Diego kid. Went to my rival high school. Another Walton family. Give him a shot. You did a good job with an all-star team up there at Golden State. You got to give him some time. He's still, you got some kids on this team. Excuse me, young men who haven't even figured out who they are yet, much alone basketball players. They, ain't even they haven't even discovered what hard work is. What, well, they know a little bit what adversity is because they've been taking L's for the last couple of years. But you get, it, it takes time. They got LeBron over there. He can't say nothing because y'all going to think he tried to get somebody out of there. You know, Le got LeBron's going to have to be quiet on this one because they think he fires coaches. It's hard coaching the best player in the world. We talked about that here on the podcast. Comes with a look. You got to be ready for it. Hopefully I'll be jaying in there trying to get no coaches up. But speaking of, don't forget who the general manager and the president is. Magic got a hold of some co Ma Magic got rid of a coach. Paul Westhead. Look that up. 
Had to get him up out of there. Wasn't feeling it. If you ain't messing with the superstar, you got to get up out of there. Good or bad? I'll tell you who's good is Swipe the Fox out there in Sacramento. Can't nobody stay in front of him. He got too much jelly roll, too much crossover, too much speed, and the awkwardness of his game is original. You haven't seen anybody take these basket lines and then move people off to the side and make them look silly. And he's fast. He's got he's long, he's quick. He might be the best Kentucky point guard in a couple of years. You got the Harrison twins, right? They're in and out of the NBA. What you got? Rondo. Can you name some other Kentucky point guards? I can't. They got some big dudes, a couple scores. John Wall ish. I mean, John Wall is a beast. He's an all star, but this kid might be right on his heels. Interesting. Sacramento might end up making the playoffs for some odd reason. Maybe because they're young and they're going to stay healthy. If that kid keeps playing like that, he's the youngest player with 30, 15, and 10 since Magic Johnson. How come Lonzo Ball can't get 30, 15, and 10? Why don't you go upstairs and ask Magic what what his secret was, what he concentrated on? Was it the rebounds? Was it the assists? Like, what was his ratio? Was he going, trying to score two and then get a rebound? And there's always ratios to these things. They leave, they leave trails. He got to figure that out. Get you 30, 15, and 10, Lonzo. I'm rolling with you. Speaking of rolling with somebody, we're going to have a, uh, 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 on this official McCoy podcast, we're going to have a special guest, my college roommate, Chris Johnson, who is also a part of the coach in the JBA. Uh, he's, he's been a trainer. He's, he's an excellent basket standout varsity. <laughs> That's the old school. A standout varsity player at UCLA. Scored 26-9 and nine without a three-pointer. All Pac-10 selection. Father and son, first father and son to win national championships and be named city players of the year. I think they were both CIF players of the year. He won two state champions. So I think he knows what he talked about. I'm only talking to people who know what they're talking about or that I know was there. I'm, I'm cool on the rip videos and the, and, the, and the experts and everybody else who, you know what I mean, thinks they was there or, or trying to troll. You be seeing these dudes in the workouts or is trying to speak up on basketball in the little comments, acting like they know somebody or talking about facts or real spill. And I ain't never seen your ass there. I only talk to people who was there. That's the only thing we're going to give to you here at the official McCoy podcast. No more talking heads, no more people doing it for play, play. Only people that really play, play and can talk about it or co coached. So that'll be, that'll be here later. He'll shine some light on the college basketball situation and, and, and LaMelo ball since he's directly involved with that situation. Let's get to the real reason why we have an official McCoy podcast this morning and why I flew through three subjects. We have an opportunity to bring on my college roommate and UCLA standout basketball star, Chris Johnson, Raymond's son from White Men Can't Jump. So let's get to the interview. We're going to get straight into the proceedings. I have a, the blessing and the honor to introduce to you on the official McCoy podcast one of my OGs, not enough, tri not soon, not not triple OG, but he is an OG. He's not up there in that age to be a triple OG. Chris Stein Iman Johnson, son of Raymond from White Men Can't Jump. If you're up on, <laughs> I had to get you early. Um, how you how are you doing this morning, Chris? Man, I'm doing great, man. Uh, excited to be on with you, brother. Just kind of sitting here at work, taking a little lunch break. Uh, the luxuries of uh, calling your own shots. You get to mm. take time off to do stuff like this, man. Let's get into it. <laughs> Let's get straight into it. And I'm glad you're able to call your own shots because I know you're a man of service like myself. And we spend a lot of time uplifting a lot of other people's platforms. And I'm, I'm glad you're getting a chance to uplift yours and leave with your name, brother. I appreciate that, man. I'm glad you're getting a chance as well. You're damn good at it, too. I appreciate it. I learned from you in the dorm rooms. <laughs> let's get straight let's in. Keep. Let's get straight into it. Let's let let's let, let's talk about the the Zion Williams Duke. What's going on with Zion Williams over there in Duke? How you feeling about the Duke? Is they gonna run away with this thing? Well, I think you know what we're seeing in Duke. 
probably our three, a collection of one of the greatest recruiting classes that we've ever seen. I'm not sure that we've ever had a potential number one and number two pick play on the same roster in right. college basketball. I mean, I'm sure if we picked our brain, we can go back and kind of throw out some names. I mean, Chris Jackson and Shaq were pretty interesting, although Chris uh-huh. Jackson, I'm not sure if he was the number three pick or what, but uh, Mahmoud abdul Raouf. But anyway, right. fast forward to these Duke guys. I mean, last night, the way that they dismantled, and it was an absolute dismantling of Kentucky mm. on national television in one of those made-for-TV games. Absolutely. I mean, it just... It, it, you know, it speaks to many things. I think that Coach K um, won't will have to do one of his best coaching jobs. Now, look, why do I say that? You can probably ask me. Well, he's got talent. He's got players. What does he need to coach for? Mm-hmm. Well, it's hard to mesh though, that type of talent to the point of where they're unselfish. They play with each other. Yeah. They're about team, you know, and there's a greater good and a, and a greater goal in mind versus individual accolades. Absolutely. So last night, what you – you mm-hmm. played on a couple of those teams. The 1995 yeah, I, Men's National Championship uh, from UCLA Basketball. And I've been, we were on a bunch of stacked teams where, you know, nobody was uh, really after individual accolades. Everybody's just about team and getting better in the W. We figured out early as young men, and the more Ws we could acquire, that everybody would get some shine. No, yeah, Ron, you have a great point there. I mean, although uh, my memory of it was that we had growing pain before we, we really achieved those levels of, hey, we're all in the same. I mean, it would start off, I remember specifically with us, your uh, freshman and sophomore year, where we kind of, you know, we had that mid-season players-only meeting. You know, we, yep. we'd go on a losing streak, a one-and-four road trip or something like that, and yep. we'd kind of get it together with each other, get on the same page and move forward. I think Duke is on the page already. Uh, you just don't dismantle and dominate a Kentucky team with right. other five stars uh, with the ease that Duke did. I mean, you know, Zion Williamson, one of the you know most talented prospects that we've seen in the last twenty years. Long time in basketball. Yeah, in a long time. Six, you know, six eight, six nine, two eighty five. But I think what's most impressive about Zion is his ability to pass the basketball. I saw that. That so was on excellent. display. Yeah, excellent court vision. Can handle that thing a little bit. Um, I was always curious to see what, what kind of game he had uh, outside of being a dunker, and I wanted to see him against some real legit competition, although I've watched him uh, in the summertime. It's just a difference when you know how it is, Lonnie, mm. your first college day, yep. you got a Kentucky, or you're like when you, know, you came, you're, you're, you're coming out party against Kansas um, your freshman year when you were going up against Ray for friends, Scott yep. Pollard and all these guys, and you're just absolutely dominant, you know, the triple double against Maryland. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to see what, I wanted to see what he was going to do, uh, Zion against some dogs. And guess what? He was the alpha dog of all the dogs on the court, um, outside of RJ Barrett. I have to agree. I have to agree with you. I, I was interested. To, I, I know why he picked coach K. Because, like you said, he's a physical freak. You know, we haven't seen something like this from maybe since LeBron James, maybe a couple of uh, highly athletic players. But I think he picked Coach K for a reason. I think at the end of the day, Coach K going to teach you how you're in there working on jump stops and drab steps. So if you can just add that into, you know, his his – his foundation of already being a freak athlete, you know what I mean? It just makes sure. sense at the end of the day. And to do that against Cal over there and the rest of them, uh, the uh, you know, them Kentucky boys, that's a big deal. Like you said, it's, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's huge yeah. for a, a five-star to come out and have a Herculean effort right away. You know what I mean? If yeah. a lot of people come out, they try to figure out a way they're 10 and 9, and then, you know, somewhere down the lane they have these big games. This kid got a lot of eyes on him. Maybe the most eyes on him since, I mean, if it's not LaMelo in them and, 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 and Zion, you know what I mean, who else has had the most eyes on them in, as far as uh, basketball and high school basketball? So I like the move. Yeah. I like uh, him, Reddish, and Barrett combining for 83 points. That's bananas. Yep. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing performance. And, you know, I think Coach K is the right guy yeah. for this type of talent because, you know, Coach K – Outside of, you know, the all the six national championships or whatever, how many they've won, you know, he's always, uh, as a Team USA coach, he's always had to balance high-level talent, mm-hmm. high-level egos, alpha dogs from whether it be Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron James, mm-hmm. or whoever it is that he's coached. Uh, coach K is the perfect person to get these guys on the same page. I can't think of a better 
perf- a more perfect person to talk to than this. You speak so eloquently on these subjects, Mr. Johnson. You know what I mean? <laughs> is, it, is, is, is it your AAU background? I'm, we were on a team of the uh, – uh, of course, we coached the AAU team. Got a couple of kids, some college scholarships. That's neither here nor there. Beast Training. Yep. I know you're the CEO and operator of Beast Training, and training a lot of the elite athletes in the Los Angeles area. So – I, I only bring on people who I think can talk about this stuff. Like if you weren't there, you ain't in, you ain't made no contribution to the culture. I ain't really trying to hear from you. So I really appreciate you coming on and, 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 you know, letting us, you know, letting us into that, that basketball savant mind of yours. It's really a treat. Man. Thank you, man. But you know, this line, this is nothing new for nope. us. This is what we do. Nope. We just, we just don't have uh, the microphone in the podcast platform. Typically, this is a conversation we have on the phone or in person. So, uh, every uh, day. You know this is, is. Yeah. This is the everyday thing. We've been doing this since 95. Speaking of every, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of everyday thing, man, LaMelo ball, your boy, you have to, you know, you mm-hmm. coached in the JBA, you're down with the BBB. You know what I mean? You've always been a, positive you always been a, you're on the you're on the ball side you've always only yeah. led with positive from him even when the dad you know kind of things got to kind of got away from him in the, in the public eye you, behind closed doors you know what I mean not even closed doors you've always publicly been supported about LaMelo the balls the dad LaMelo gonna enroll in Spire Academy yep talk about that is he gonna is, how, how do you feel I'm glad he got to go to high school man I know we talk on the group chat every day and we just all wanted, you know, we just all were mad at the fact that he didn't get a chance to finish out high school. So I'm, I can't be more excited for a young man that gets to finish high school than I am for Lamelo. Yeah, you know, and the move to Spire, I think it's 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 it just kind of falls in line with another one of Lavar's moves that seemingly, you know, you kind of get the impression that he's kind of making a bad decision. And then once you reconcile everything at the end of the day, you know, LaMelo basically has spent the last year since he got pulled out of Chino mm-hmm. Hill playing against high level competition. So it's been a development year for it LaMelo has. Ball. It, it um, wouldn't have been a de- it. it wouldn't have been a development year if he was still in high school. It yeah, been, think about it. So, it yeah. Because you know, he would have well, been bullying. This is, this is my yeah, this is my point. Yeah. So my point is if he would have stayed at Chino Hills yeah, you know who is he practicing against every day? The JV I mean, players, was, you know, second string, third string, or sure, it might be you know some D ones or whatever. I mean, one or two on that team. It's not like they have you know just a roster full of guys. So he goes to Lithuania, right. plays in the second division over there as a sixteen year old. So he's practicing, practicing and playing against older, stronger, more experienced, seasoned kind of guys in a different style of basketball in a different country, which teaches you something. Which teaches you a whole lot. We played overseas. We understand what happens when you go overseas. You learn a lot about yourself overseas, you know what I mean? And and playing against grown men, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, That's development at the end of the day. We had to park. You know what I mean? We had to yep. park with the homies in the park with the brown bag and, you know, playing outside. My spot was El Toyon Park. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know where yours was in Los Angeles. You know, it probably yep. was somewhere centralized around Crenshaw and some, uh, and, yeah. and, and, and some other places where they were playing basketball at a high level. But these kids don't got to park no more. And, you know, LeVar's yep. kind of old school like that. So I kind of think he throws them in the fire. I mean, my dad dropped me. I rarely, I don't think he did either. I could be wrong, but I rarely play with kids my age. No, right. Neither did I. Right. Neither did I. It was always it was always about playing up, playing against grown folks, grown men mm-hmm. who had men men strength, men basketball IQ, mm. and men attitude. So that all that being said, so we go from Chino Hills to Lithuania. Mello, you know, competes over there. Lithuania it, it shakes out like it shakes out, but on the heels of Lithuania, he goes right into the JBA. Right. Now, as far as the JBA is concerned, I think there's a misperception out there that the JBA somehow Speak didn't field the type of talent that, um, you know, other, other – well, look, I'll put it like this. The JBA was good for LaMelo because it gave him an opportunity to play against 19, 20, 21-year-olds that were older than him, that were just as tall and mm-hmm. athletic, but had, had some experience on him. It also – gave him the opportunity to see what it's like to travel stateside in America, right. have to play back-to-back, right. have to go coast-to-coast, you know, five-hour flights, you land, you, you know, you, you're going straight to the gym for shoot around then you're right. back at it in three hours for the game. Yep. I think that that experience had a value. And then I also feel like the fact that 
um, the JBA was condensed into about 90 days, 60 mm. to 90 days. I mean, we literally didn't have days off. So we, you know, after games, I mean, we were practicing the next day. Right. And there were, there was, there were very, it was very seldom that I didn't see Melo at practice in the gym working on his game. So from my perspective, thinking of it like a dad, okay, as, as in my son William, who's a fresh retro freshman. Yeah, I was about to say, you I better mean, speak on Ill Will. I know this is a, yeah, but we drop a bomb oh, yeah. for Ill Will. Yeah, you got Ill Will's yeah, plan. So, Go ahead, you speak on it, look. Yeah, so, <laughs> so as a dad, though, as a dad, and when you're thinking about development, I mean, this was possibly the best uh, thing that could have ever happened for mm-hmm. Because uh, remember, Melo was 16 when he got pulled out of Chino Hills. Imagine being a 16-year-old. Right. You get to go to Lithuania to play pro. Right. You own the, and then you finish up that job. You got you go a Facebook to, watch to show. JBA. Yeah, you go to JBA, then you play pro there. And then you go overseas. He's been overseas for the last three, four weeks. And they've actually beat some top-tier Russian teams. Mm-hmm. They've played some solid German teams. They've been in Belgium. They've been in France. They've been all over Europe playing against legit competition. So we, we take all those factors, mm-hmm. we throw it in the pot, and now you have Melo Ball still maintaining his eligibility to play in high school when you had so many detractors. So many. Um, some of our, and many of them in our group chat. Um, <laughs> when, they made the, when they made the decision, the group chatters were hating. hating. Oh, why are you giving up your eligibility and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, look, guys, let's, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's um, let's actually give LeVar Ball a little credit for the foresight, for his strategy, for executing a yeah. plan. Let's stop saying, oh, LeVar doesn't know what he's doing. I'm, and that's the part that gets me. Right. LeVar does know what he's doing. You just don't get you don't get into the position that you get. I know that we differ on our opinion of big baller brand, but it's a million dollar business, Jelani. At the end of the also, day. The Jello Ball situation, sure, it didn't may have not worked out the way everybody wanted. China, Are we talking about the, the sunglasses. Still in sunglasses. We can't, it's you can't, like, you know, can't plan for the sunglasses though. As a dad, well, yeah, you know I, what I mean. I, I, <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, we, yeah, you know, young people doing young people stuff. I mean, Lord knows that's a, this is another podcast idea. Lord knows we got into some ish. You know what I mean when we were young men at UCLA, but we didn't steal nothing. No question. No question. And, and, and for me, so when I look at the Ball brothers as a total package, um, as, you know, each one individually and where they're at in their basketball careers and their lives, I feel like that they are in very good places and that they still, there's a ton of upside as far as their careers are concerned. I hate the fact that in our culture and our society today, we kind of start to tend to write off kids when they're 16 or 17 years old because they didn't take the traditional path that we're all kind of used to so now it's like we get a closed mind when we see a mellow ball pulling all these moves and you just you know then you start hating on him and this and that but the reality is he's 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 an infinitely better player than he was nine months ago as a 16 year old at chino hills and he gets to finish up his prep school year his senior year at a prep school in ohio agree or do you are you hip to the spire and he grew Andy grew and he went milling through the lane now. Are you hip to Spire Academy? Do you know Spire Academy is, is like a school for sports? It's focused on sports? Yeah. Yeah, it is. So uh, Spire, yeah. Go ahead. go ahead. I wasn't hip. Go ahead. No, so Spire, Spire is like a lot of these prep schools Oak that Hill. have popped up, popped up over the, yep, mm-hmm. over the last Finley Prep. Yeah, for Finley Prep, uh, Montverde, yeah, um, that has popped up over the last several years with a focus on basketball. Now you know that the head coach is Jermaine Jackson. Who oh, wait, 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 Jermaine Jackson, Detroit NBA, Jermaine the one Jackson. that played with me in Toronto, my homie. Right, right, right. Uh, d- so, that's the see? dude. I didn't know he was over there, Aspire. So he's the head coach. Oh. Um, you know, and so Brand, so apparently Brandon Ingram, you know, him and Lonzo have a relationship. Yep. Brandon mentioned J- JJ. Uh, Which is a good dude, Lonzo, good dude to learn from, old school throwback like us. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, with those old school values. So, yes. so, you know, LeVar and Jermaine probably hit it off right away. For sure. Um, And, and, and a guy like Melo is going to go there. So he has a lot of talent at Spire Academy. He has He's got the dude. That watch, yeah, that I watched up close and personal in the EYBL, a kid by the name of Rocket Watts. He's from Detroit. That. Michigan State. Yeah. yeah, Michigan State commit. That's not who I'm talking about. And you know who I'm talking about. Who, the big guy? Robert Bob Cree, the 7-7 seven, seven, seven homie with the Yao Ming jumper. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's an interesting thing. So the 7-7 seven, seven kid, you know, I can't really speak on him 
as far as talent level. I didn't even. So when I saw that video, when I saw that video of him, I thought it was a video game or an artificial intelligence ringer. <laughs> Of a, and they were making a joke. I thought they were making a joke. I thought it was a joke. You thought, thought it was a you, saying, you thought it was a media company gift, or you know how to be playing games <laughs> on these media companies, putting heads on different people and, and from videos back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. It, this guy doesn't—he doesn't look real. Yeah, I'm rolling. Real. I'm rolling with Melo if he can make that kid a player. Yeah, yeah. With, and, he he and looked Mello's, like he got stroke. Melo's tendency is to get play, make players around him That's what I love better. about him. That's why I never yep. wrote the kid off, because of his unselfishness, you know what I mean? In the, yep. in the past, he got a little bit of his brother in him as far as pace and getting the ball ahead. You know, that's the way the Chino Hills play and that whole good stuff. But he's got a lot. He really enjoys getting his teammates off and seeing his teammates aspire in the middle of a ball game. So he, I, that, that's yeah, why I've always it, been a problem. I like unselfish. He, and he's a point guard. Yeah, he's a point guard. He's unselfish, and he he plays the game with an unbridled joy. I think that's the part about Melo Ball and yeah. in all in, in all the Ball brothers, for that matter, is that gets looked over and doesn't get talked about. Everybody's so focused on Levar. When you look at each of these guys' character on the basketball court, these guys are fun loving. Yeah. they never are getting. They're never getting into fights. Unless I mean, the one Mello, piece, he, Mello, but he Mello had slapped, to. So Melo Melo slapped somebody overseas. Okay, that was the first time that I saw any of the ball brothers get into any kind of confrontation. And I've been watching them for seven years. Right. Okay. For six or six years or right. whatever it's been. This is the first, that was the first time that I ever saw any of them get on fluster. And it's a good ratio. I respect, and I respect LeVar's approach and how he raised the boys. Um, just having, having children and having a son. I mean, I wish in my perfect world that I could have the ability <laughs> to start up a professional league in the United States Preach. strictly strictly to get my son better Preach. and help my son develop. I mean, that was the most unbelievable move I've ever heard of, and I still think LeVar doesn't get a lot of credit because it was a non-mainstream kind of move. Is that is that um, – what is that? Tapestry? Is that huge-ass thing that, that, that LeBron had in Cleveland? Is that is that real? Did they actually make that, that poster or whatever that piece of advertisement is in Ohio? Is that a real thing, or is that one well, of these know, media you games? Can't believe, you can't believe everything you see on the Internet. There's a thing <laughs> called Photoshop. There's a thing <laughs> called Photoshop. So it's like people some, – some people out here are get are really easily swayed and get gassed. I'm not that type yeah. of a person to where I'm going to get gassed and think something is real and then – See, the thing that bothers me is people will react to seeing that and then act like it's real, then find out later that it wasn't, but they've already made the statements about how much BS it is that he has right. this poster and this and that. But it's like, dude, it wasn't even real. So, mm. like, why are, like, your whole point just gets invalidated because, you know what I'm saying? And if it, let's say Melo does have this big billboard. It's beautiful. Uh, like LeBron had in Cleveland or wherever Spire's located, Geneva, Ohio. I'm rolling. So what? I'm rolling. He paid for it. What's the problem? Big, big baller, baller brand. I mean, big, baller, big baller brand's putting the bill. So I don't got a problem big with it. Bill. Yeah. More, more power to him. More power to him for sure. What else, what else we got going on? Are you rolling with – where is this next stop? Are you rolling with him going straight to the NBA or you think he gonna, they're going to humble him out and make, us, make, him make a stop at the G League and some God for sake? Well, the cities have gotten a lot better now. They've moving the the, well, the, 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 the yeah. teams closer into the real city. So, but do you see him? Uh, do we see him in the summer league? Do we see him in the G League? Do we see him at vet camp? What's going? Where, where does he land yeah, after great, the Spire deal? Great question. You know, I'd have to. For first of all, I gotta. You know, from what I know, uh, if this if Melo's eligible to play at Spire as mm-hmm. a seventeen year old, he's not eligible for the draft for another two years. Ooh. So. I'm trying to figure out, and this is part of the questions I have, after this year at Spire, yeah. um, is he eligible to go back? Is he eligible to go into the draft, or is this going to be an overseas kind of thing for a year again where right. LeVar you know, does that and then bring, puts him into the draft? Either way, I feel like by the time Melo is 19 years old and is draft eligible, he will be a top probably seven pick. I like saying top five, but I'll give you a top seven pick. Mm. Um, in the draft, uh, and I think he's going to be this year at Fire. He's going to be probably one of the most talked about prospects in NBA scouting circles, for sure. Um, next to RJ, next to RJ Barrett, um, I mm. think Cole Anthony's up there. But I think people are going to fall 
or, or, or get to witness just this development plan of LeVar, the fruits of all the labor are about to blossom. You know what I mean? It's yeah, about absolutely. to look, cause you, you know, you, you got to think about it line. You know how it is when you're working out and you're doing all this stuff. It doesn't really kick in until that, that you know, about a year later. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And so the year mark is going to be around January or December, you know, January of 19th. He so I want to, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So let's, let's just see how he looks, um, how he's going to be playing. I have no doubt. I have utmost confidence that he's going to dominate every level that he ever plays on. He's just, look, the kid's motor is something that, that doesn't go talked about. Look, we played 48 minute games all summer at mm-hmm. the JBA. This guy, this guy averaged probably 40, 70 minutes a game. He oh, rarely man. came out. Right. Yeah. He really came out, really got tired. I'd never seen him breathing hard. Uh, Lon, I seen him playing kind of at that same pace for an entire game. Mm-hmm. I think that that doesn't get talked about. This kid is a straight baller and he's in impeccable condition. What what doesn't get talked about enough is what you said what you said earlier about the sense of joy that Lavar has I don't know injected into his his son's games because the, you don't see that a lot right now right now we get a lot of talented dudes but they be pressed they be so yeah. pressed not to make a mistake and play perfect basketball you know what I mean those guys just make plays you know if it do if it goes their way cool if it doesn't go their way they are cool with that too. You know what I mean? Lonzo Absolutely. gets flack for his poker face and not wanting to scrap. You know what I mean? And and uh, 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 they they have a they just have something differently going. You know what it is? They're validated from pops. They're not looking. They don't need any other outside validation from AU right. coaches or shoe companies. They're not in the bed with shoe companies. You know what I mean? Trying to become something that they're not, so they can identify with an Adidas or Nike or whatever it is right. kind of apparel that they're making they're 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 satiated you know what i mean their yeah. thirst has been quenched and they had all the good food that they need and they're getting the positive affirmations that they that they need from their friends and family and they don't need nothing else yes, and, and it, exactly. it it took me a while to understand everybody wants to build a cocoon around their kid and put them in a right. bubble and and, and make stuff happen for him, you know. He took it a step further. Some dads let their their kids be trash and they let their kids play an extra ten minutes, you know. And there, and he turned yeah. the ball over. He took it a step yeah. further and created, like you said, a whole league and brand around his sons. Not really himself. Yeah. This thing wasn't a Levar Ball thing. This was about yeah. his kids. You know what and I mean? It's always, but it, it's always been about his kids. Exactly. And, and people, people don't like. Some of the things Lavar says. Remember, it started off when he said he can beat Jordan in one on one. Preposterous. He spoke, yeah, and then he spoke up about uh, the Lakers and their tro- troubles and their struggles. Yeah. Talked about the coaching, and so that I think that that's where people kind of are really turned off, and then they let that carry over into their opinion mm-hmm. about Lavar's offspring and his kids. I think what they lose sight of is that this guy is top five dads of all time. Um, sure. If you really if you really look at it, he's one of the best fathers of all time. Yeah, he's I mean, up there with Uncle kids, Phil. <laughs> because listen, the dream. So so if you look at old if you look at old videos of the Ball Brothers, these guys since they were young, they wanted to play. They wanted to play basketball. Yep. They loved the game. That's what they wanted to do. Lavar has made it possible that they can do this in their own way. The problem is people. They want you, and once you go outside the status quo, yep. then you're looked at as a renegade. You're looked at as a rebel. And in our society, the renegade, the rebel, they don't get that initial love, right? The renegade, the rebel, they don't get the love until about 20 years later. A no. la Muhammad Ali. Absolutely. A la, you know, you know and, and different people throughout history that yep. we see that at first, you know, if you go back in time, some of the legends and heroes that we hold in the highest esteem uh, today, back then, were maligned. Back then, were viewed Uh-oh. as you know public enemy number one. Back then, they were looked at as you know this horrible guy, kind of like Lavar is looked at. I think time will tell. Um, in ten years, we'll be looking back at the Ball brothers as you know as heroes, as, as kids that did Agreed. it their way. Lavar is someone that has started a brand and is making major money. I mean, Lon, we were traveling around the nation uh, in the JBA. Every city we go. We'd walk through the airports, be in the hotels. I mean, it was like traveling with a rock band. Uh, that kids, means something. Kids, 
kids all over the country wearing triple B shirts, and if they didn't have a triple B or couldn't afford it, guess what? They were wearing white T-shirts, and they were drawing in with markers oh. the triple B. The triple B. That's and real. That's because it, yeah, and it's a movement. And there's something to be said about creating a movement, man. Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, they're all established. They've all been there, done that. You know, it's hard to get in and be a part of something like that without just kind of falling in line with everybody else. If you're rocking the Triple B and you're a part of that movement, this is something unique and different and something that we've never, ever seen. Triple B, what have we seen that has reached the height, the height that Triple Bs have reached? LeVar uh, Ball was on Dada, the Dada, the Dada spinning shoes. Talking smack about the president. What kind of stuff is that? That was real. Yeah, (laughs) that was real. That you know, I mean, that was that was. There's no supreme more supreme boss moves than getting on Twitter beast with with old boy over there in the in the in the in the the, the White House. That was that was huge. That was huge. What else? Kanye. Kanye. Yeah. Belgium. Belgium. Where where's he at? Oh, that's where they Kanye, he, Kanye met him Kanye in Belgium. Yeah, Kanye Kanye showed up to Lamelo's game in Belgium. I What's mean, the whole play you know, there? A shoe that's, run? That's pretty legit. That's pretty legit. I'm. I mean, you, you know, we got to talk about Ye on him. He got some making up to do. He just needed to go disappear for a minute, but he definitely got some explaining to do. But what what what, sure. what do you think comes out of that? Marketing a shoe? You think he comes in on the uh, on the BBB shoes and start designing them? Is he talking about marketing? Is he talking to him about audacity and disruption? What comes out of the Kanye West and Levar Ball Triple B uh, relationship? Well, what I'd love to see come out of it, you know, I don't know what's going to come out of it. What I'd love to see is that Kanye lend some of his expertise mm-hmm. that has allowed that has allowed his sneaker to be one of the hottest commodities in the history of shoes. Um, mm-hmm. as, far as, a, as far as a creative consultant to the brand, the brand obviously needs help in a yep. lot of different ways. Yep. I think Kanye and his expertise, his vision, and then his team could possibly potentially help. Uh, my question is with the relationship with Adidas, just how much can Kanye get involved? And right. is it one of those things where he's going to go rogue and say, F it, I'm just going to mess with LeVar? and Triple Bs because I love the movement. You know, I'd like to see some shoes, a collab, collaboration come out. Me too. You know, some type of, some type of Triple B Yeezy would be nice or mm-hmm. anything that, that is merging those two uh, forces of nature together. Would be great. And I'm going to still need my oh, – Will, but Will can't do that. He's under that Oregon duck shoe lock where if he gives yeah, away a pair of his shoes, you that, know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's Damn near his, yeah. That's still knees on yeah, but I'm still need, need to find out how I can get my will, will to thrill jersey, man. Stop playing with me. We're yeah, talking. We'll get it done. Yeah, we're talking to Chris Johnson, uh, 26 and nine with no three pointers. Uh, CIF Player of the Year, two time state championship. One of only, I think you guys are the only father son combination to win the CIF uh, Player of the Year in national championships. Is that correct? Yeah, well, so, yeah, I think so. I know we're the only father and son. Me and my dad, Marcus, who uh, started UCLA, are the only father and son. First Wooden Award winner. Number three pick of the Bucks in 1977 are the only father and son to win a national championship at the same school. Now, others, like Uh, Bill Walton, the Bibbies have won championships as well. uh, uh, Scott May and his son, um, I can't, his name name escapes me right now. Yeah. Um, But but, uh, they all won. Yeah, big I boy from Duke. Not, I mean, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So I think I think Scott May might have won a championship in Indiana, and then his son won one at Carolina. So, but we and my dad are the only ones to win it at the same school. Which is which sounds a lot better. Oh no question. Yeah, sounds a lot better. Man, well, pretty, thank you. Pretty difficult. It is very difficult. Is any is any is there is there you know Chris? We usually end these things on a culture update. You know what I mean? If you yeah. want to participate in, in, in this culture update before we get out of here, because I could keep you on here. If we can do this, we're going to have to have you on again because we can do this for another two hours. This is what we do all day. But I got a problem. In my culture update, I'm having a problem with the I voted stickers. Now, you live in Los Angeles, correct? Yes. Did you, did, did you of course, you voted? I assumed you yes. voted. You don't have to out yourself. You can lie. You can lie and say you yes. did. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I'm having a problem with the I voted stickers. 
Do you guys up in Los yeah. Angeles, so you started posting these glorious I Voted stickers. They look a whole lot better than this trash that we have down in San Diego. Have you ever, have you noticed the switch on the I Voted stickers? Well, well no, I noticed that the quality of sticker uh, for the, in L.A., the one that I got and the ones I've seen on social media is yeah. infinitely better than the one in San Diego. The ones that you guys got <laughs> look like look like something out the 99 cent store. It uh, does. It was unfortunate, but the reality is, no matter what that sticker looks like, you let your voice be heard. Just get uh, you a sticker. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't matter how the stick, how janky the sticker is, how flimsy your San Diego sticker was. The fact of the matter is your voice has been heard, and you're now making a difference in, in the direction of our country, and that is what matters, Ron. Why are you speaking so eloquently this morning? <laughs> I do this all the time. I do, I, I'm you. I'm I'm usually coming in with the you know. I don't I don't appreciate your vernacular right now and how you're using all these twenty point <laughs> words and you your sentence are, are transitioning smoothly. Uh, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed that you <laughs> shed some light on my culture update. Update about me wanting to be petty about my ninety nine cent store stickers and here you come <laughs> shedding some light about people's voice being heard. And and it shouldn't matter about your sticker. I want a better sticker, damn it, loco. <laughs> I'm tired of L.A. and the Bay being the forefront of things that are sexy. They got tech in the in the they got tech in the Bay. They got sports in L.A. and they took our sorry ass Chargers. So we down here with the Padres, yeah. no hope, and Anchorman stickers needs to be hey, better. Yeah. Yeah, very janky. I'm disappointed in San Diego. I thought it was America's <laughs> finest city, but That's what apparently I thought. when it comes to voting, they don't have a budget for quality stickers. Well, so they that, got the dude. Definitely- they got the dude. We got the dude, the councilman out here that went and ran away with all the money and had put himself on oh. vacations. I forgot his name. Oh. Somebody hit me yeah, on it. Yeah, it shows. Yeah. It, it shows. does show. It shows. It shows. <laughs> you know what does show, man, that we definitely got to have you on for another opportunity out there. And we're going we're gonna to come together. We're going to bring you some better topics. I don't like you leaving you in this LaMelo ball and, and, and Duke wheelhouse. Let's talk Bruin legends. Let's talk UCLA basketball, movies, fashion, and all the things that we do on a Tuesday. Absolutely. Whenever you want me, man. Whenever you want me, I'll be ready to go. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, just let me know, Lon. My dude, this has been the official McCoy podcast with my OG, Chris Johnson, the dude who let me borrow his polo clothes when I came into L.A. in the big and tall shop jeans and, and collar shirts. I was looking a little San Diego and dated and he was <laughs> <laughs> and he was kind enough to let me into his extensive polo collection and have me looking all right there in Westwood and my rating went my up. guy so my guy I appreciate it thanks for coming on and we'll we'll talk to you soon man have a good rest of your week man and keep up that positivity that lend somebody else that because I didn't a- I, absolutely I, absolutely I, thanks for having me online appreciate talk it soon. yes sir Maybe you have a bigger voter turnout if we can get some better stickers. You want for young people to vote? I'm looking at a young millennial right now. He's got stickers all on the back of his of his MacBook. And they don't look like them I, I, I voted stickers. They got some embellishments on them. They did a good job. Come on, man. Whoever we got to talk to, they're doing us dirty down here in San Diego. Call your local alderman or city council guy. Whatever it is that you got in in your in your data bank, and tell them we need some better stickers. The sticker companies out here that'll be more than happy to produce it. Those are some sleepy ass Anchorman stickers. Like we should have had like those stickers should have been on the lapel of what's his name, Will Ferrell and Anchorman in a burgundy suit. You know what I mean? While he's drinking scotch, it's not sexy. We're doing sexy things down here in California, Southern California. We need sexier stickers to try to play us because we have the southernmost part of the uh, of the state. Hand us the janky stickers. L.A. and up north, get some cavy stickers. I ain't trying to hear it. We got to do better. Whoever's in charge of the stickers, holler at me. We got some, we got a design team here to officialize. We do stickers. We got Ripper Magoo stickers. Uh, uh, Kirk Cousins stickers. We got, uh, you name it. Go to the platform, officialize.com. Follow us on Instagram. And, and you'll see the stickers. Maybe we can help the southern section of California get some better stickers for I voted. And maybe more young people will vote. I voted. If you didn't vote, you have a problem. Don't be. I hope he wasn't adding people on Instagram all day yesterday and didn't take your ass out there and vote. 
are then going to have the nerve to post something about politics or having your voice heard. There's some clowns out here. Let's stick to the official, the real. That's what we stick to. This has been an official McCoy podcast coming in hot. Maybe a little too much coffee. A little too reactionary this morning, but that's how it is. Hope you have enjoyed the rest of your day. I'm going to enjoy the rest of mine, guaranteed. Although my back is hurting a little bit. I'm going to figure that out. I figured that it was hurting this morning when I got up, but I figured that I was still going to have a good day. That's what you should do. If something's ailing you, get over it. Continue to have a good day. We'll continue to bring you more of the official. This has been the official McCoy podcast. Thanks for tuning in.